Greetings everyone, my name is Reynolds and today we're looking at another character deep dive for, well, not a Custodes leader, but something that's been talked about quite a lot, that is of course Kyria Draxus, who is an Inquisitor. And while this combo has been known for quite a while, it's gotten even more popular to talk about ever since the data slate, so I figured let's make a video about it, talk about it, and see what she exactly does for the Custodes army. So, first and foremost, Kyria Draxus, the new hot thing, as I said, already been discussed before the data slate, but even more so now after it. So, Inquisitors have the ability to join any Imperium battleline units. For Custodes, that of course means that she can join Custodian Guards or Prosecutors. Now, there's a whole lot of talk about whether or not she can join Sagittarum, and I'm just not even going to go into that discussion. In my book, it's pretty damn clear that she cannot join Sagittarum Guard because Sagittarum are not Battleline. End of discussion for me. Anyways, Kyria Draxus is a fairly cheap Custodes leader coming in at only 75 points. The cheapest Custodes character we have is Valyrian at 115 points and the most generic character, not the most generic character, but the cheapest generic character we have after that is a Blade Champion at 120 points. So compared to those guys, 75 points is quite cheap. Kyria Draxus brings with her some pretty decent shooting, and she also gives you some indirect fire protection, which can be decent. So, taking a look at Kyria Draxus' weapons first and foremost, she has two ranged weapons and one melee weapon. Her ranged weapon starting off with the Dire Singer. This is an 18-inch, 4 attacks, Hitting on freeze, strength 4, AP 0, damage 2 weapon with anti-infantry 4+, assault and dev wound keywords. As we all know, anti-infantry and dev wounds is a classic combo in 10th edition, which basically means that if you're shooting at a unit with the infantry keyword on a 4+, it counts as if you've rolled a 6, and therefore you will deal devastating wounds, meaning the opponent doesn't get an armor save or an invuln save and just takes the damage right away unless they have a feel no pain. Her other shooting weapon is a psychic attack, 18 inch range, 6 attacks, hitting on threes, strength 6, AP 0, damage 2, with indirect psychic and sustain hits 2 keyword. 6 attacks with sustain hits 2, hitting on threes means that on average you're going to get 6 hits, but of course there is the potential for rolling 2 sixes and then all of a sudden you're going up to 8 hits, so it has good potential to spike. Then finally, in melee, she has a power fist, 3 attacks, hitting on 3, strength 8, AP 2, damage 2, which is, you know, it, it's fine. Then for her abilities, she has the Xenos Hunter, which means that you get plus 1 to hit against Xenos. Now, this isn't super useful for Custodes, because we're hitting on 2s anyway. That being said, you would be surprised by how often you're shooting at something, and it has stealth or minus 1 to hit from something else. And in those scenarios, plus 1 to hit against Xenos can help, Obviously, it's only against Ceno, so it doesn't work against any Imperium factions or Chaos factions, but it does come up every once in a while, so it, it, it's, it's decent, it's fine. Then finally, her second ability is Psychic Veil, which is in your command phase on a 2+, the unit Kyria Drax is, is in cannot be targeted by ranged weapons outside of 18 inches, so basically you get Lone Operative, but instead of 12 inches, it's 18 inches, this is a decent ability, but it has some downsides, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment. So, what is the combo that everyone is talking about? Well, it's honestly pretty simple. I'm not even sure I would call it a combo, because it, it's really, really straightforward. So, Kyria Draxus, an Inquisitor. She can join either Prosecutors or Custodian Guard. So what you do is that you put her in Custodian Guards. What does that do? Well, when a character joins a unit, they get access to the same abilities as that unit. Of course, Custodian Guard has reroll wound rolls of 1 all the time, and reroll all wound rolls if they control an objective. You then also get access to the once per game double shoot ability, which means that you get to fire all of the Custodian Guard's weapons twice with rerolls, and then also all of Kyria Drax's guns twice with rerolls. And that, that, that's really the combo, that's it. You simply add a character with some decent shooting to your unit and get the option of shooting that weapon or sorry, those weapons, twice in a single shooting phase. Now, the reason why I said that 18-inch loan up is not as good as it sounds is because 18 inches is actually quite a lot more than 12 inches. I know on paper it's only 6 inches, but you need to remember that in Warhammer, when you're shooting at each other, 
you need to be within that range to actually be able to shoot. Custodian Guard has range 24. Meanwhile, Kyria Draxus has range 18. So that means at any point, if Kyria can shoot something, something can shoot Kyria. On top of that, deployment zones in Warhammer are almost always exactly 24 inches apart. That means that if the opponent deploys something on the line of the deployment zone and moves 6 inches, which I think is like the average movement of stuff in Warhammer, they will be able to shoot. So the 18 inch loan up really only gives you solid defense against indirect fire, which isn't nothing, but it's not as good as people make it sound. A lot of people are like, oh, sh like my custodian guards are immune to shooting. That's not really true. You could of course then argue that, hey, Okay, my unit is not immune to shooting, but they need to get close to be able to shoot me. And you know, that's a fair point. But I just want to stress that 18 inch loan ups is not nearly as good as actual loan ups. All right, so let's talk about some of the math because that, that's the kind of guy I am. I never go by people saying, oh, I just rolled six sixes and I just destroyed this Terminator unit. Like that's great, that happens in some games, but we can't really use that to determine if a unit is good because that is not statistically average of what's going to happen. So Kyria Draxis, on her own, what does she do? Well, we assume she joins the Custodian Guard unit and when she's shooting, the Custodian Guard unit is on an objective to get access to full wound rerolls. So Kyria Draxis, on her own, against Marine Equivalent, that means toughness four, two wounds and a three up save, with both of her weapons will kill four Marines on average. Against a Terminator Equivalent, she would kill one Terminator and deal two damage, and against Guardsmen, she would kill six. So those numbers are okay, right? A single character killing four Marines, one and a half Terminator, six Guardsmen, or you know, Hormagons, Termagons, whatever. That, that's okay, that's fine. But of course, Kyria is not alone when she is shooting. She is joined by a Custodian Guard. So if we add on in Custodian Guard shooting with Draxus, we instead get seven dead Marines on average, two dead Terminators on average, and 12 dead Guardsmen on average. Then we have to take into consideration double shooting, because that is something they can do once per game. And obviously double shooting just means double the results, so that would be 14 dead Marines, 4 dead Terminators, or 24 dead Guardsmen. Now I didn't include stuff like a Dreadnought or a Rhino, because while you can do some damage to them, you will not kill them statistically on average, even with double shooting and wound re-rolling. That being said, if you just need to plink a few wounds off of a, you know, a Rhino or a Dreadnought, then the shooting will do anywhere between 4 to 6 damage on average. So, you know, yeah, you add some shooting to the Custodian unit, which, as I said, is not bad at all. But I have some issues with Kyria. First and foremost, her indirect fire gun is nice, but it's not going to be game changing. It is four shots, it's AP zero, it'll be hitting on fours when you're shooting indirect. And it is two damage dev wounds, so you can kill a few models here and there, but as I said, it's not game changing. It does not have the potential to even kill a five man normal marine squad. You can pick up some Nurglings, you can pick up some marines or some sisters of battle some Necron Immortals, whatever it is, that's okay, that's fine. But to get the full effect of Kyria, you really need to not be shooting indirect. You need to have true line of sight. And that also means that there's quite a lot of requirements to get that full effect we just talked about when killing, you know, four Terminators or 14 Marines, all that stuff. You need to be on an objective with the Custodian Guard unit and you need to control it. I think this is a thing that some people might be misplaying, because a lot of other units just has to be either on the objective or fight something that is on an objective. For Custodian Guard, they need to be on the objective and control that objective to get the full wound rerolls. You then also need to be within 18 inch range for Kyria Drax's guns to work. If you're within 18 inch range, then of course your 18 inch loan ops doesn't work because then you can also be shot at. You also need full line of sight with all of the Custodian Guards to get the full effect because you want all of them to be shooting. And then finally, it's 75 points for a leader, as we talked about, that is cheap, but it only benefits custodies in shooting. It doesn't really do anything for them in melee, and the targets in which Kyria Draxus will be effective against, I'm just sitting here wondering, well, I mean, yes, I do get that extra bit of shooting, but quite honestly, is it really gonna make the difference? Again, it's nice to have that extra bit of shooting. It's nice to be able to pick up a few more uh, infantry models when shooting at, you know, toughness 4. 
It's all nice, but is it 75 points nice? Is it worth it? I'm still up and about about that one. I am not entirely sold on Kyria Draxus. I know there's so many people who's gonna disagree with me and be like, ah, oh, she's the greatest thing ever. I just, I just love her and that's, that's totally fine. That's cool. That's okay. I'm just not personally sold on it. There is another combo that is worth considering when talking about Kyria Draxus, and that is when she joins Inquisitorial Henchmen. So, if you take a full-sized Inquisitorial Henchman squad, two of the models in that unit, which are called Mystic, has the rule that no models can be set up within 12 inches while being led by an Inquisitor. This is of course very nice for Custodes, who in general is not amazing at screening, and is absolutely horrible at screening 3-inch Deep Strike, which we are seeing a lot more of in 10th edition. So you take the Inquisitorial Henchman, and then you add Kyria Draxus to give them the 18-inch cannot be shot at ability, so they don't get shot off the home objective by, say, indirect fire. That combo, however, is also a little bit expensive, because you're paying 75 points for Kyria, and then for a minimum size squad of henchmen, it is 60 points to get 4 henchmen, 1 Mystic, which is the model with the 12-inch no deep strike ability, and 1 Gun Servitor. And this is how you need to take them. They're, inquisitorial, uh, inquisitorial henchmen have this weird unit composition where it's like, no, you can't do two henchmen, one mystic, one gun servitor. It needs to be four henchmen, one mystic, one gun servitor. And then if you want to do two mystic, it's like, oh, it has to be ten henchmen, two mystic, two of this, two of that, blah, blah, blah. All in all, it comes out to 135 points, which it's a little bit expensive for a backfield objective holder. But it's probably mostly meta-dependent, right? If you play in a in a scene where there's a lot of Vanguard Marine players, a lot of Hyper Crypt Necrons, a lot of Grey Knights, a lot of GSC, and you're just so tired of your objective being grabbed by 3-inch Deep Strike, then I can see this combo being worth it. Otherwise, again, probably a little bit on the expensive side. Overall, my opinion of Kyria Draxus is mid. I don't think she's an auto-include as so many people tend to say she is, because as we've discussed, she does add some extra shooting to Custodian Guard, which is fine. I just think there's a little bit too many hoops and loops you need to go through to get the full effect of that shooting. The 18-inch no shooting at is, like, niche at best. Plus one to hit against Xenos doesn't really benefit the Custodian Guards too much because they're already hitting on twos. So there needs to be, like, stealth or minus one to hit for that to matter. And finally, maybe the most important part is that Kyria Draxus takes up an Agents of the Imperium character slot, which means that you cannot bring the Kalz Assassin, the Evasaur Assassin, and Kyria Draxus. You need to give up one of them to make space for the other. And after playing with Kyria Draxus a little bit myself, I don't think she's worth taking over an Evasaur Assassin, but that is my personal opinion based on my own games. And it's always really hard to rate these things, right? Because I can sit here and pretend that I am the greatest Custodes player in the absolute elite of the world, and that's not true. I can also sit here and pretend that everyone plays in the same kind of meta, with the same kind of players, with the same kind of competitive mindset that I do, with the same kind of terrain layouts, and that's not true either. I think it can pretty much just be described as being, if you want more shooting and you're playing in, you know, America, where everyone's playing player place terrain, so there's a lot of open sightlines, then more shooting is good, right? More shooting is great. If you're playing in a more casual environment where people really don't, you know, go super hard on how to play the game and, and those things. Again, I don't, I don't, I hate saying this because I don't want to call anyone out and be like, oh, you're not playing competitive. No, 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 no. But the matter of the fact is most people who play Warhammer just don't really care about following the rules to the, you know, maximum extent of it and like, doesn't care about winning games by scoring points, they care about shooting the enemy model and dealing damage and feeling cool. And that's why these videos are always so hard for me to make, because I have to take all of those things into consideration. At the end of the day, though, I will go with my personal gut feeling, and as I said, I think Kyria Draxus at best is like mid. It's, it's fine. It's not an insane combo, it's not something that will carry Custodes on the shoulders. It's, it's fine. It's okay. And with that, we've reached the end of this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think. If you haven't already done so, feel free to hit the subscribe button for more Custodies content. And until I see you again, I hope you have a wonderful time.